welcome you all in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We're gathered this morning to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and especially to remember for God our sister, Jerry, giving thanks for her life and commending her to a merciful Redeemer and committing her to her final resting spot. We begin our service by remembering the baptism that called Jerry into a life of faith. That's the symbol of the white pall that we put over the urn that contains Jerry's remains. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection of life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comfort of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Uh, if you know these, uh, the psalm, the, the words are in your bulletin. You can say this with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil so that my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. God of grace and glory, remember before you today our sister, Jerry. We thank you for giving her us to know and to love as a companion in this pilgrimage of, on earth. In your boundless compassion, Lord, console everyone here who mourns. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life. So that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with all those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are one of uh, Jerry's 11 grandchildren, up to speak. Uh, my grandma was one of those people that had an uncanny ability to just connect with everyone she came in contact with. Growing up, I learned quickly not to go to the grocery store with her, and I'm sure my grandpa learned that far before me. She would make what seemed to be just a quick stop at the store turn into what felt like a lifetime. She would never make a list of what she needed. She would go aisle to aisle grabbing things along the way, talking with employees, other parents she met through either me or the kids. She always had time to talk with someone and make sure that they truly know that she cared about them and their well-being. This quality was shown most when it came to our family. She would make sure to be, uh, to be as present as possible in everyone's life. She loved just coming and supporting her grandkids in whatever activity they were participating in, regardless of how far, what the weather was like, or if there was a worldwide pandemic going on. Uh, one thing I hold on tightly to during this time is how she got her last Christmas with the whole family. This day was one of her favorites. She always made sure to get the grandkids everything they needed and everything they, we didn't know we needed. Shout out grandma for the uh, bath towels. Um, another big part of my grandma's heart belonged to getting ready for the holiday season. The highlight of that being that she got to go out and spend time with her daughter-in-laws, spending the whole day going, shopping, all while uh, sneaking gifts into the other's baskets. She loved her family so much, and I know that she carried that into the friendships she had with everyone watching or in this church today. I asked for some help with writing this earlier this week for my Aunt Karen, and she sent me this poem that I'm going to read. It goes, May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall softly upon your face. The rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Jerry wouldn't want us to leave here feeling sad that we lost her. She would want us to join together and rejoice that we could all spend this lifetime together and this life together. She loved you all deeply. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, 
another grandchild, Grace, is going to come and speak. Now, I am not good at public reading, but I'm going to read something first before my speech. Um, it's a quote from a movie. Um, I will just get into it. Here we go. When I was 19, Grandpa took me on a roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, oh, what a ride. I always wanted to go again. It was just so interesting to me that a ride could make me feel so scared, frightened, sick, excited, and thrilled all together. Some didn't like it and went on the merry-go-round instead. That just goes round. Nothing. I like the roller coaster better. Get more out of it. And see, that quote just makes me think of my grandma because she liked the up-down. She loved the roller coaster. She loved when we were all over at her house on Christmas, making so much noise that I believe at one point we made young AJ cry. <laughs> she, she loved coming out to see all of our sporting events, regardless if it was raining, snowing, or 90 plus degrees. There was nothing that stopped her from getting to be with us, to see us. And much like the end of a roller coaster, when it comes to a jerking stop, so was Jerry's passing. But you see, when you get off of a roller coaster, you don't think about that jerk stop. You think about all the fun you had while on the ride. And we just need to remember all the good the happy times that we had with Grandma Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. <clears throat> I've uh, chosen two uh, pieces of scripture today for us that, that seem to make sense the first one is, might be a little less familiar to you. It's from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. And on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said on this day, Lo is our God who we have waited for, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to give honor to the gospel lesson today. Our holy gospel is according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is Jesus talking to his disciples before he was arrested. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How could we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you shall know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Bob told me that the grief comes over him like waves. 
that really struck with me. Having been married almost as long as Bob and Jerry, and eating nearly every meal together like we do, it's hard for me to imagine the suddenness of this loss for Bob and for all of you. Life must seem like a fog right now. And it's a reminder for each of us just how fragile life is. And thus how precious we should make every moment that we have. Uh, both in this life and, and spent together in life. And one of the things that I think we can confidently say about Jerry is that she was someone who enjoyed life. She, she had a wicked sense of humor. And in my uh, few encounters, I saw this and I heard her laugh. Moments before she got sick at dinner, Bob said that they were laughing about something stupid the dogs were doing. Uh, next to something stupid the grandkids were doing, that made them laugh the most, Bob said. Jerry loved life and she loved to be in the world. She was someone who liked to be busy. Even though she was in her 77th year, she still worked 20 hours a week as a legal secretary and did taxes as a hobby after that for others. She liked being around people in, in the office, joking with colleagues, stimulating her mind with legal work and numbers, and she just wasn't one to be sitting still. Which is why if she wasn't working, she was attending some of the multitude of events that 11 grandchildren get into that you heard Grace and Chris mention. Jerry threw herself into projects too, especially those that helped others. She found purpose and value in raising money for Palatonia and supporting Bob's passion for writing. She's remembered here at Messiah, working with uh, Nancy Becker and others and creating the Cookie Walk, uh, uh, one of the most successful fundraisers we've ever had at Messiah. Thousands of dollars were raised every year for Joseph's coat, clothing and furniture, and I think the uh, IH um, inter Hospitality Network before that just selling plates of homemade cookies. But you had to get people to make those cookies, 12, 13, 14 dozen. Uh, and we've got thousands of cookies because of Jerry's hard work. And people would come for hours at that event to pick out the best cookies in these trays of choices and tables that were laid out. It took a lot to organize, gather bakers, publicize. It was an event. And Jerry loved deeply, too, her, her grandchildren and children, and probably Bob, too, I'm guessing, and surely her dogs <laughs> in the midst of that. She rescued dogs, giving them a home, care for their last years of life. She confiscated dogs, too. Chris swears that after leaving his dog there for just a short few months while he settled into an apartment that Jerry wouldn't give it up. She told him that Bob loved the dog and she didn't want to break Bob's heart. When Chris told us this story the other day when we were planning this day, Bob said that was news to him, that he would have gladly gotten rid of the dog. Jerry just couldn't stand to say goodbye to any of those dogs. Work and church and community, all important, but they were all second to her family, right? The, Four kids that Bob and her raised between the two of them, the grandchildren that came later, central to their lives. Shirley burying her oldest son, Rick, was the hardest thing that was ever asked of Jerry in this life. It was a grief that nearly broke her. She wasn't always sweetness and sugar, that's for sure, with her grandkids, too. Uh, you didn't want to get her mad, because... Uh, told a story for us, but I don't think you told it just now where they were playing in the mud after Jerry told him not to, and you don't do things that Jerry tells you not to do. She was so mad that she hosed him outside in the cold and then made him stand outside in the cold to dry off. But Christmas, like Chris says, was their opportunity to just simply love on her family, and surely that was why it was so important to her. She looked forward to Christmas so much that she kept up decorations through July because she couldn't bear to get rid of the season. 
Gift giving then was that signature, right? Not just a multitude of gifts, but the specifics of the gifts. Sure, you got some socks in that mix, but she also got something that, that she thought about, that she cared about, that she wanted you to have. And she did that by making careful lists. Uh, I was told by Karen where uh, the list, and they took them to Kohl's, and they got it, and they lost the list once at Kohl's, and that became a whole thing and a panic in the midst. As Bob was putting together today's memorial service, the one thing that Bob was adamant about was that the grandchildren be included <clears throat> in ways that they could. Jerry had her own opinions about today, too, that we are honoring. There's no pictures of Jerry on our cover, and we're not going to ever say her full name and her real name. She also wanted us to laugh and she wanted us to have the grandchildren apart, too. So it was good that Chris and Grace came and shared words of love for their grandmother. And it was good that Bob and you organized these grandkids into writing something for us that we'll have forever to look at and read. Her life was marked by the commitment that she made to this family, especially these youngest ones in these last years. Like Grace said, she supported and encouraged them in the pouring rain and at lacrosse tournaments and sitting through three and a half hour dance recitals that no one but the 12 year old dancing is enjoying. She was their biggest cheerleader and also told them uh, to hold themselves accountable helping them mature into adults. And she loved them unconditionally. Family and home are, are the center of Jerry's life, which is why I ended up choosing these two descriptions of heaven. That's what both of them are that we read. They're descriptions of what heaven's going to look like. The first one from the prophet Isaiah way, way long ago, 2,600 years ago, 2,500 years ago. It, it compares heaven to a feast that's held on a mountaintop. And everyone is going to be invited to this feast and this image. Even those you haven't talked to in a while. And there's a few like that. And all the animosity, all the old hurts, the past grievances, those are going to be forgotten. The image of all those things that separate us in this life is death. And death is going to be pulled off this feast like a magician pulls a sheet off a table to reveal something beautiful underneath. I thought of that feast when I heard how her grandkids loved Jerry's mac and cheese. Bob said it was just box craft macaroni. <laughs> but it's made with love, right? And that's what the ingredient is. It's love. In this feast that heaven is going to be, that's what the very presence and air is going to be. Love. And the other image of heaven is, is this picture of a huge house. That's the more familiar one that you've probably heard before. A, a, a sort of home that I like to think that Jerry and Bob tried to create, uh, bringing together two families, making room for adult kids when they, uh, when they needed space in their lives later on, raising Chris, their grandson, taking in high school friends when they needed a spot. Adopting dogs or anything with four legs and a tail that wagged. And in my father's house, there are many rooms. And I go to prepare a place for you. That's the image of God, right? Someone who's preparing a place for us. Someone who's welcoming us. Someone who's making room for us. The image I like to imagine is Jerry making the bed and setting up that room for each of you all now. Of God giving her a room right next to Rick and her heart no longer broken but mended. We trust in our lives that God has a place for us. But we only know to trust that if we've experienced love in our lives. 
So you all have been given a gift, and I, and I hope you understand that, a precious gift. And it's the love of someone that someone gives you that you haven't earned and you don't deserve. They say that if we haven't experienced unconditional love and a relationship in our life, it's hard to trust any of the promises that we believe Jesus has made for us. And that unconditional love we trust here in this world, it comes from a place of brokenness. <laughs> right? I mean, Jerry was broken. Her, her love came with nicks and scars like any of us. And faltered and failed at times, too. Because no human can love completely, unconditionally. Yet for her family, Jerry came close. Is that her calling now, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. Well, that'll make her mad if it was. <laughs> uh, I just want you to rejoice that, that, that you were on the receiving end of something really special. And know that that was just a gift that was also a witness of who God is. And maybe you could make that connection. God made Jerry in, in his image. And then Jerry better life on that love. Jerry deep, healed her deepest hurts and continued to live through that love. So I hope you not only have enjoyed the love that Jerry gave you, but that now you live in that love, sharing it with spouses and friends and neighbors and your own grandkids someday and co-workers and, and dogs too. And I hope you recognize that you learned how to love from someone who had to learn how to love herself. And you failed at that love by someone who failed at that love herself. But that that love has been redeemed. And a God who is preparing a feast for any of us. Who truly does make the best mac and cheese in the world. And has got a room with our name on it already. Who's waiting to welcome us, not when we die, but right now, with love. Amen. We're going to sing again. shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for life say to the Lord my refuge my rock in whom I trust and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand the snare of the fowler will never capture you and famine will bring you Under his wings, your refuge, his faithfulness, your shield, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold. hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies.
Christ by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For to his angels he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you Lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. Stand. The God that we believe has welcomed Jerry in this house is a God we understand comes to us in three different ways, and we use this creed to help us understand that. You could say this with me if this is a part of your faith heritage, too. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks this morning for your love that has been made known in Jesus and your spark of life that has come to us from the moment of creation a light that is shining through your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we celebrate the life lived in Christ of our sister, Jerry, and the love that she learned from you that she shared with so many others. And with confidence, we hope now of that love being her embrace in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we celebrate the saints that have come before Jerry and all of us who taught her the faith and taught her life and love. We especially remember this morning her son Rick who passed before her. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who are gathered now whose life journey continues. Hold them tight. Send the body of Christ, your Holy Spirit, in this world to be in their midst so that their grief is not alone and that their grief is not without hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we stand today because of the power of Jesus on the cross who revealed in his death a life that each of us can have now and forever. 
Hear these prayers, Lord. Hear these prayers. We lift them all up in the saving name of Christ. Amen. If you know this prayer, pray with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Bob, could you join me here? At the end of our <clears throat> worship in this space, we do something ancient called a commendation, which is a reminder uh, to God, really, that for God to keep God's promises that God made to Jerry when she was baptized, that she is surely a sheep of his own fold. So now let us commend Jerry Hockstock to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jerry. We humbly beseech you, a, a sheep of your own fold, a, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of all the saints of light. Amen. We're going to sing one more song before we leave this space. and 
place on earth and let it be In the name of Christ, amen. We're going to follow our cross. We're going to walk down this aisle. You can follow in behind us. Uh, and we will walk around. And you all, when you get to the nursery, uh, you'll be waved in by Brian uh, into the nursery. And you'll go through the nursery into our memorial garden. And Bob and uh, Jerry's with Coraines and, and the cross uh, will go around the other way uh, so to go to the column bearer. We're going to read scripture as we do this. Jenny? In distress I called to the Lord who answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I shall not fear. What can anyone do to me? I was pressed and I was pressed and to the point of failing. But the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become now my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation, they echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live. And I shall declare the works of the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. In Psalm 121, 